Right guys, welcome back. Going to just quickly check about containment. Now containment is is a bit of an issue with a lot of people. There's, there's a lot of guys that prefer one way, prefer another way, and they all have valid reasons and excuses and, and whatever else it takes in order to uh, justify what their preferences are. But I will tell you that for me, if I'm handing a, a little night head and it jumps out of the bin, it's not an issue. If I'm handling a 1.2 meter forest cobra, 1.3 meter forest cobra and it jumps out the bin. It's not that much of an issue. But there is always the risk depending on the locality and where that it's going to just disappear again and you now this time won't find it around, this time around you won't find it. There is an issue however when you try and put two and a half meters of mamba into the top of this bin that becomes a problem because all these bins whether they're square whether they're round whatever design they are they come off molds and uh, with a mold what happens is that the product has to come out of the mold and in order to do so the mold cannot be 100% vertical and symmetric all these bins are tapered not just this way but they're also tapered this way and so when this lid is open the top section is way bigger than the little floor space so when you put a snake in there and it's got to settle on that little floor and it's got this huge funnel funneling any dangerous situation or threat down towards him and he's cornered at the bottom there's very few snakes that really want to stay there so a catcher under those conditions generally you has to to work hard to put the snake in and keep it in and so what i've done is i've actually designed a box that has got a hole in the front and you do this and the snake goes into that hole and um, once it's in you can close this up and the snake is contained. Now for the purpose when I made this bin, this particular bin, uh, and it's one of my older bins so it's a, it's a prototype really, um, I could not get the black with a snap with a snap on covers and the others were just a bit dark for, or a bit too light for me and um, I found that the snakes wouldn't really just go into them because they were lighter of color so the black worked and um, I had to manufacture some sort of device on the top to sort of keep this enclosed but I suppose you could use a lighter bin and just paint it black really not an issue you'd want to paint the inside black and you'd want to paint the outside white because when you're in subtropical case in, this black bin gets heck of a hot in the sun and we generally find that this has to go into a bigger polystyrene box just to keep the temperature down but um, there's a bins issue and then there's also guys like myself that prefer to use bags because bags are airy and they're light and um, you know uh, generally speaking if you're going to put a snake in a bin from the top that's it one snake in the bin at a time and um, that's going out I'll be catching a green mamba, a black mamba, a Mozambique spinning cobra, maybe a forest cobra, a worm slung, a vine snake or whatever and I can't put all of them in the same bin but I can put them in separate bags and they take up zero space and these bags can literally all go into one bin. Now I do know that the risk of being bitten through a bag is relatively high. But crossing the road with your eyes shut is also a relatively high risk. And so if you're aware of that and you know that you need a long tag end 
and you always deal with the long tag end and you don't do risky things like touching on the bag itself then um, it's not that much of an issue but then to put a snake in a bag there's a couple of ways to do that and I'm going to demonstrate two easy ways and uh, you can see for yourself um, how this works so what I got here for this purpose is a forest cobra so I'm gonna put the forest cobra on the hook There's a forest cobra. Get him out there. I'll put him on the hook. Oh, he's posing. Look at that. What a beautiful snake. And you can see how desperately he wants to come to me. Yet, unless he reverses off the hook, there's no way he can get to my other hand. So, I'm just going to keep him like that and keep him on the ground. In which case, he will very rarely reverse. And I'm going to lay that out and I'm going to take this piece of gutter down pipe. Now the reason why I don't like the round tubes and pipes and things is simply because I don't know if it's just a coastal thing but um, very rarely am I actually going to work on level ground and if your tube and your bag and your thing isn't on level ground then you find that, this, that the minute it rolls, the snake comes staring out and says, I'm not going into anything that's going places. And so I find that the square does not roll. And it's got a flat and it inevitably settles there. But the purpose of that tube is simply to keep the bag open. And now I'm going to rely on natural behavior. So I'm going to bring the snake around a little agitated at the moment. I bring him around. I show him the hole. Let's see what he does. His natural behavior would be to want to hide. So there we go. Put him down. And in he goes. He goes to hide. Do that. And this is where my hook comes into the fore again because now I can safeguard my hand. There we are. And I can fashion a knot in there. And uh, that is it. So there we are. One forest cobra contained. So that is one way of bagging a forest cobra. Another way. I suppose you could use any sort of instrument to keep the bag open. You could have someone helping you with a, with a hook stick or a tongue keeping the bag open and that would work as uh, long as the person helping you isn't nervous and wants to run away all the time. The uh, other way of doing it Another way of doing it is I'm going to neck the snake. Right, now I've got him necked. The ideal grip is to have your thumb and your forefinger like that on it. And these three fingers supporting the neck. That way you've got ultimate control over the snake. And it can't turn and get too close to you with those fans. So that is the, uh, one of the best ways of doing it. Now, the other way, or, or, or rather, to put it in the bag now becomes, uh, what would you call it, I don't know, um, 
a bit of an issue in that you can't just open the bag and chuck the snake in. There's high risk of being bitten. So uh, what you're going to do is Lloyd's actually going to pass me one of the tubes out of my bag there. See that black tube there? There we are, just toss that to me. Alright, so I've got this piece of tube. In fact, it's two tubes in one. Alright, so there's a thinner one for smaller snakes and there's a thicker one for bigger snakes. And uh, what I do now is pretty much as you would tube a snake under natural conditions, I get him into that tube. There he is. Inside the tube, there's a hole over there. You can actually see the snake through there. I know he's right in front. And now I can put my hand inside the bag and I can now take hold of the tube and the bag at the same time and of course I can hook up the tail there like that the snake is now folded double and I pull him into this into the bag and there's no chance that he's going to bite me because his head's in the tube I'll do that I bring my hook out again and uh, once again I pull my bag through and around I can now let go of the tube the snake will pull his head out of the tube and when I let the snake out he's going to be free of the tube and um, there we go so there's that so as far as containment go with bags I suppose that's the only two really effective ways of doing it. The uh, other, of course, is the bin. So, I'm going to just open that. I'm going to put the bin over there. Can you see the bin? Just put the bin up here. You can see that there? Come in to check. Just check. Yeah. You can see the bin. 100%. Right. I'm just going to turn a little bit. And uh, I'm again going to take my hook stick. And we'll fish the tail section of this forest cobra out of here. Now, when I tail a, a, a snake, that is the vent over there and uh, I want to have that vent well in my hand. You'll never see me tail a snake at the tip of the tail because the section of, of vertebrae beyond the vent has got a very low muscle mass and it means that if you're putting the weight of the snake on that it actually is painful for the snake and you'll find snakes are pretty unresponsive they don't really want to do what you want them to do. And so um, I grip him like this. Out he comes. He's already shifting the, the tube off his head. And uh, he's wondering what I've got up for him next. Now I'm going to bring him along and show him that. And see, are you going to go in there? Mostly the guy in straight off. Give him a bit of encouragement. In he goes, and he thinks he's actually escaped. So at this point, I'm going to pull him over. Close it up, and the snake is contained. So that just works out awesomely. Fairly easy, because I'm using natural behavior.